Chris, Mark, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank Thank you for having us. So let's jump straight into this idea, a starting point, a website where if I understand correctly, people can log on to just get the facts about politics and engage with their politicians. The question I have is, can you create a website that is nonpartisan if facts around politics are involved? Sure. I mean, that's the challenge, isn't it? There, there's three sections to the site, and I'll let the viewers go check it out themselves. But the first section is where we outsource to get fact-checked. That's where it is trying to demystify basic issues, not only by the elected officials themselves, but trying to give the electorate a perspective of not only the Democratic, but the Republican perspective to know where they fall in the, in the political landscape. There's no denying that now people say if a fact goes against what they believe in, well, then it's been influenced, it's been faked, it's been affected. So, Mark, how do you play into convincing people that the fact is, in fact, a fact? You know, Chris and I, uh, and Joe, we talked a lot about this going in and how we would do that and what we would do. And if you look at the different fact check websites, it becomes arbitrary really quickly and very debatable. So what we did is the best that we could do. A, we keep the answers very short, so they can't say too much. You know, everything's under pretty much two minutes. So that that, that, uh, (laughs) stops too much bloviating. But two, we handed it over to another organization that just handles uh, accountable dealing with policy and, and, and tracking bills. So therefore, then when people wanted to say, well, we couldn't find any backup for that, we couldn't find any backup for this, and then it is incumbent upon people to say, well, then where do we go to find more backup? And we right. try to do some breadcrumbs. But we, again, we're just a starting point. I, I like that you call it that, a starting point, because it feels like, I mean, please forgive the pun, but it feels like this is end game. You know, and now you, you, you're starting off where it feels like we're long past. Like, people, people don't seem to care about what a thing is. They care about how it feels right now. Sure. Do you think you can get people back to a place where they go to look for facts before they make a decision on who or what they vote for? Sure. I mean, even what you said earlier, that, that kind of dizziness of the obfuscation, deliberate obfuscation by a lot of people in power to kind of muddy the waters, and it becomes this kind of, uh, you know, Ouroboros. And, and I think that does breed a kind of disinterest and apathy. And so, so I think what we're trying to fight against is, is the exhaustion that the political landscape can present with the dizzying of, you know, subjective information, subjective facts, and just trying to connect people back to elected officials, the, the political landscape itself, in an effort to try and, you know, breed uh, participation so that, so that democracy you know, doesn't die, not to be dramatic, but, but that, that's what'll happen. The folks in DC that you see on TV are talking about things that the folks who elected them are concerned with. That's the, what we're really committed to more in saying, this is the fact, this is the way forward. We're not the authority. We're trying to help soften the tenor of the conversation to be a more productive dissonance. That was good, Mark. Remember everything you said. Thanks, Thanks Ken. <laughs> I'm going to steal one of your analogies. Yeah. 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 Let's put that on the site. So you don't have likes, you don't have dislikes, you don't have comments, you don't have... You You basically don't have the internet on your on your website, which is... I mean, it's very old school. But I would like to know, though, why don't you have likes? Why don't you have dislikes? Why don't you have comments? Well, because I think it's a bit of a negative reward mechanism. I mean, I, I, I may not be the only one on this call to say that, you know, it's 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 not refreshing. You know, anytime you go and scroll through the comments section, you don't walk away saying, man, I feel better now. Um, so, so I think sometimes the tail can wag the dog when it comes to political comment sections. I think you can kind of trick the algorithm, tailor what you want to say to encourage likes and seem louder or, or, or more relevant than you are. And so I think we just wanted to kind of remove that. And, and again, I think that's actually one of the contributing factors that makes people turn away from politics because it is the vitriol is just at an all time high. Right. So I right. think just to try and make the landscape committed to a more scholastic uh, intent than kind of the the kind of toxicity that sometimes, you know, individual opinions can have. And then also, I, 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 you know, we do have one way that people can get feedback, which is they can take two actions on our site. One is to register to vote, and the other is they can connect to their elected officials directly. They can reach out. And, and I think we've registered almost 7,000 people to vote so far, and over 35,000 people have reached out to their elected officials. So at least to us, an engagement is if you reach out to your elected official. An engagement is if you register to vote and actually do something. Um, Chris, I have to ask you this question. Wait, um, there's no, there's no denying that many people consider you a woke bay, right? Online, people know know that you share your views. You know, you have left leaning views. You're a progressive. You've never hidden this. Yeah. To be the face or one of the faces of this website means that some people are going to automatically assume that some of the things you are doing are trying to push people to the left or not. How do you assure people that it's not happening? And more importantly. How do you stay away from doing what you believe is right because of your political beliefs? 
Yeah. Well, I'll still express my opinions when, when I feel called to do that. I don't think one has to step on the other. I, I led with the fact that, you know, look, I, everyone knows I'm democratic. Everyone knows I have my issues with certain people and, and, and I won't hide those. But, but when you examine the mechanism of the website, it's virtually impossible. I mean, at least I would argue virtually impossible for me to somehow inject my opinion into the mechanism of each section. Each section is pretty airtight in terms of just trying to give the elected officials a platform and encourage connectivity between those two parties, the, the, the elected officials and constituents, rather. So right. again, I, I understand people's concern, but, but like I said, I've been trying to shout that, that I'm aware of it too. You have to talk to a lot of politicians who you don't necessarily agree with, both of you. Um, Chris, you caught a little bit of flack when people saw you take a picture with Ted Cruz's daughter and it was like, oh, you're with Ted Cruz. How can you be taking pictures with Ted Cruz? And you're like, well, I'm here for the daughter. And Ted Cruz said this for my daughter. But then there's Ted Cruz in this. How, how do you balance that on your side? Because, I mean, it is, it is a little bit weird. Some people are like, I don't agree with any of your politics. But as Captain America, I would like to take a picture with you. You may even go like, I hate this policy that you enacted on human beings. But as Captain America, I understand that you'd like to take a picture with me. How, how do you balance that? And, and how do you respond to people who go, Chris, how could you do that? Yeah. Well, in that circumstance, it was a child. I'll always take a picture with a kid. Um, right. but, but, but in general, just even sitting down with certain politicians, there are certain people on you know, the extremes of both parties who there's no wiggle room for that. And, and again, what I would argue is, look, if this person wasn't in power, if this person wasn't writing bills that affected your life, fine. We, we can shun them, you know what I mean? We can scream louder than them. But we can't pretend they don't have some sort of stay, some sort of impact. Right, and right, I think right. far more pernicious to become stubborn and retreat to your corner than it is to say, okay, I wholeheartedly disagree with you. I think you may even, you know, infringe upon human rights, you know, something that, that you know, offends me deeply as a person. I'll still let this be a landscape of competing ideas and get you out that way. Because I, I think the other way just becomes cyclical and, and everyone spirals and, and no one listens. And, and I don't think you move the ball down the field as effectively as you would if you say, okay, let's just, you know, out talk me. And these are elected officials, right? I mean, they are responsible for passing legislation that will mm. affect our lives. I mean, Chris did something. Tim Scott came on. He said, listen, you and I don't agree on a lot of things, and, and, but I appreciate that you'll let me have a conversation on uh, about things that I know mm. you don't agree. And I think if we can do that, maybe people can get better at having conversations, at least at Thanksgiving around the dinner table with things yeah. they don't agree with without punching each other in the face. Well... As your website uh, name suggests, we hope that this is a starting point. Congratulations to both of you, and hopefully more people will register to vote and more people will engage with their elected officials. Chris, Mark, I appreciate having you on the show. Thanks, Thanks. I appreciate it, man.